What's going on, everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the brand new Sparkle ROC Luna Edition A770. Recently on the channel, we took a look at some of their lower end cards like the A310 and the A380 from the same company, Sparkle. In fact, we actually mixed and matched the GPU coolers here, creating the world's first low profile A380. If you want to check that video out, link is in the description. But today we're taking a look at their brand new offering, their Luna Edition Arc A710. And I do think that this is an awesome lower cost 1440p card that would be perfect for people on a budget looking to game at those higher resolutions. Plus, they offer this in black and white, and to tell you the truth, I think this is the first art card that I've seen in this white color scheme, so to go perfect for the snowblind builds everybody likes to do. And when you compare this to, let's say, the A310 and the A380 that we've taken a look at, I mean, it far exceeds the performance. Obviously, it's a much larger card, it's going to pull a lot more power, and this is the most powerful art card that Intel is offering right now. And with this new Sparkle Luna Overclock Edition, they've added dual ball bearing fans. We've got a metal backplate. And again, they offer this in a black and a white variant. I've been a big fan of these Arc GPUs for a little while now. And uh, Intel does have a lot to gain from their driver updates. So uh, that's one thing that they've really been focusing on. I mean, just taking a look at their last driver update changelog over on their website. Days gone, 5% average FPS uplift at 1080p. Fortnite performance mode, 15% average. Need for Speed Heat, 36% average, VR Chat, 5%. Going down the list, you'll see a lot of fixes, and most of the time when they release a new driver, you will see a bunch of different games listed here, giving us kind of the average uplift that we're getting with this new driver. So they're always working on these ARC GPU drivers. This new card features one HDMI 2.0B port and three DisplayPort 2.0 ports. You'll need two 8-pin PCIe connectors, and they recommend at least a 550-watt power supply, but uh, with the overclocking that we can do with this, I would probably go up to at least a 600-watt PSU with this unit. And when it comes to the overall specs, on the base side of everything, we've got a boost clock up to 2300 MHz, 32 XE cores, 32 ray tracing units, 512 Intel XMX engines, 512 XE vector engines, 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 VRAM, and the total board power is 225 watts. But I'll tell you, we can go much higher with that clock, and it's going to pull a little more power too once we're done with it. But we're going to see some really great 1440p performance out of this card. But of course, we can't just run Windows on the card itself. We'll need a rig for this to go into for testing. So what I'm going to go with here is my new build for 2024. This is kind of my test rig I've been using with everything. We've got an Intel Core i7-14700K. 32 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM running at 6400 megahertz, didn't go crazy with it. A 360 millimeter Corsair AIO, 650 watt Corsair power supply, all inside of this Antec case. And, uh, you know, I wanted to get the white version of that Luna, so it would go right with this build here. And I think it kind of fits right in with the whole aesthetic. Now, I've got a lot of games that I want to test here, but I also want to do a little bit of performance tuning. We're going to do a little bit of overclocking to this A770 because uh, that's how we're going to get really great performance out of this card. Had this thing up and running for a while now, and with these ARC GPUs, we've actually got access to the ARC Control Center here, and uh, my favorite thing is the tuning section. So we've got a game launcher right here. We can set up a few different custom presets, but from performance, performance tuning, We've got our GPU performance boost, GPU voltage offset, GPU core power limit, and our GPU temperature limit. We can also adjust the fan speed here. And I do like overclocking these cards a bit. So real quick, what I'm gonna do is just open up Furmark. We're gonna launch this. Up in the top left-hand corner, I've got Afterburner running. And this is our GPU clock stock. So, you know, we've got 2300 megahertz there, not too bad. But we can get more out of this card. So now we're up here at 23. I actually take the GPU power limit all the way up just to make sure we can achieve those clocks. GPU voltage offset. I've been going up to around 15 to 20 millivolt plus. And the performance boost, I've been taking this up to 30. We'll go ahead and apply. And as soon as I apply that, you'll see we now jump up to 2,535 megahertz. The GPU is definitely pulling some power here, but we are working with a larger GPU. And yeah, this does make a difference. I wanted to show you a benchmark that I ran with and without the little bit of an overclock we just did. 
Using the Geekbench 6 OpenCL benchmark, at the stock clocks of 2300 megahertz, we got a 105,485. With that overclock, we're up to 113,027, putting us right in between that RTX 3060 Ti and the RTX 3080 laptop GPU. So right there in the middle with this overclock here, and performance is looking really good here. I also went through and just ran some basic 3D Mark benchmarks with that overclock enabled. Night Raid coming in with a 75,695. Fire Strike, 32,592. And finally, we've got Time Spy here with a total score of 15,384. At the very top, we've got our graphics score for this GPU, 14,761. So it's looking pretty good with these synthetic benchmarks, but you know, we've done a lot of testing with Arc, especially the Arc I GPUs. And they seem to benchmark higher than some others on the market, but then when it comes to real-world gaming, they fall on their face. But that's not the case with these ARC desktop GPUs, especially the A770. First game we have here is Helldivers 2, 1440p, high, XESS is set to quality, and if you're not familiar with XESS, it's Intel's XE Super Sampling, basically FSR or DLSS for these Intel ARC cards. And if you went down to medium, you wouldn't need any scaling here, but I still think it looks really good like this. And we're seeing an average of around 79 FPS. I always like to throw at least one fighting game in, so we've got Mortal Kombat 1, 1440p Ultra with no super sampling. Going into this, I thought we would need it, but uh, I left it off just to see what would happen, and we're at a constant 60 FPS with this. Fighting games work great on this 877. If you're familiar with Power World, you know that right now, without any mods, we can only access DLSS, and we can't use that on an Intel card. So I did have to take this down to high, but we're at 1440p, seeing an average of around 73 FPS. Fallout 4 with the latest update, 1440p, Ultra, and I knew we'd have good performance with this. I thought we'd be able to go ahead and lock this at 120 hertz, but unfortunately we only got an average of around 91, and I'm not complaining, I mean it's great at 1440p, even with a lot of explosions on screen, still stays really steady. Forza Horizon 5, this one just works on everything, and I knew we'd be able to take this on up with no scaling, so we're at 1440p, ultra, no XESS, getting an average of 102 FPS. Ratchet and Clank ripped apart, 1440p, very high, and we did need to add some DLSS, especially when there's lots of characters and explosions on screen. I took it to balanced instead of going to quality, and we saw an average of 81 out of this. I also wanted to test a couple games with built-in benchmarks, and we've just got Red Dead 2 here at 1440p, Ultra. Since we don't have access to XCSS, I've got FSR set to quality. We had a minimum of 35, maximum of 115, and an average of 87. Also went with Shadow of the Tomb Raider and its built-in benchmark, 1440p, very high, no fidelity cast, no XESS, we're at a native 1440p, got an average of 96 FPS. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, 1440p, Ultra, with XESS set to balanced. Now there's a bunch of ways to run this over 60 on this card. This game has a ton of different settings that you can utilize, so you can really go through the settings and pick and choose how you want this thing to perform. We had an average of 87 and a low of 69. And the final game I tested here was Cyberpunk 2077, 1440p, Ultra, XESS is set to auto. And if I had to guess, it's probably going right there to around balance. Looking at an average of 77 FPS, it's really playable here. And in this cityscape area, you can see there's a ton going on. Out in the more sparsely populated areas, this jumps up over 90 FPS. And I had a really good experience with Cyberpunk 2077 on this ARC A770. It's been a little while, they have had some driver updates, some optimizations that really do help out with performance. Before I wrap this video up, another thing I wanted to take a look at was just maximum temperature we hit on that A770, maximum clock, and maximum power draw. But keep in mind, we are overclocked while testing, and you can kind of tweak and tune on your own. You can go a bit lower with it, you can try to go higher with it, it's really up to you. But after a day of testing, we hit a maximum clock of 2,535 megahertz on this card. Maximum GPU power was up to 276 watts, and that's definitely getting up there. 
But the temperatures were much lower than I thought they'd be, given that we had that maximum GPU power of 276 watts. We only hit a max of 67 degrees Celsius. And it has a lot to do with Sparkle's new cooler and those dual ball bearing fans that they added to this edition. So far, I like what I'm seeing out of this new Sparkle A770, and, uh, you know, given that we can overclock this just a little bit, really awesome, gives us just a little extra there, and I do think that this is a good $300 option for 1440p gaming. It's not a 4K card by any means, but, you know, older titles can definitely run at 4K on this setup here, and uh, Intel has been pumping out the driver updates that really help out and up in the performance. And I know we've got a little more performance that they can squeeze out of these cards. So if you're interested in checking out the A770 from Sparkle, I'll leave some links in the description. If you've got any questions, let me know in the comments below. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.